So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, our Board of Trustees, uh, former chair and current member, uh, Bev C. Thank you, Francesca. I want to thank you and Josemi de la Rosa and the whole UCF and ICPC teams for your roles in organizing and executing this incredible effort to bring the NAC and APC to fruition this year. You have all done amazing work. I am Beverly C., immediate past chair of the University of Central Florida Board of Trustees and also immediate past chair of the Georgia Tech College of Computing Dean's Advisory Board. I'm now working with the National Security Innovation Network to develop a new alliance between the problem solvers of the defense, academia, and venture communities to create powerful and unexpected effects in the service of our national security. As an advocate of the International Collegiate Programming Contest, I'm so proud to represent all of these institutions today. I want to congratulate all of our North America Championship contenders and coaches and North America Programming Camp participants. Your being here speaks volumes to your talent and capabilities in programming and computing. I look forward to seeing the results later in this closing ceremony. You are all champions in my mind. I've dedicated my career to modeling, simulation, and computer science. I know the difficulty of these fields and honor your hard work to rise to this competitive level. My daughters have careers in computing and my granddaughters are entering their computer science studies. The ICPC is the premier competition where you can prove your abilities to program at the most prestigious level. The visibility of your accomplishments through the ICPC and North America Championship competition allows you to serve as role models to attract students to computing. Thank you for your efforts and your teamwork. The International Collegiate Programming Contest has been a key partner with the University of Central Florida and many other universities and institutions for 40 years, along with hosting competitions throughout the world. In having participated this week, you're in the company of some of the top programming minds in North America. I feel so fortunate to be associated with ICPC along with our generous sponsors. Special thanks to our titanium sponsor, the National Security Agency, and the platinum sponsor, Universal Parks and Resorts, and all of the other partners and sponsors that believe in you in this effort to distinguish you all as programming champions. I look forward to seeing each of you progress in your professional careers and motivate future programming and computing specialists to further their dreams of walking in your footsteps. Please enjoy this evening's speakers and most of all, celebrate your success. I now want to introduce Jeff Donahue, Deputy Executive Director of ICPC and Professor of Computer Science at Baylor University. Jeff and Bill Poucher, Executive Director of ICPC, have accelerated the importance of programming and computing to a worldwide audience. It's my pleasure now to ask Jeff to say a few words. Thank you, Bev. Wow, what a week it has been. Let me congratulate you, the brightest young students in North America. Your dedication and hard work in the face of many obstacles is what we are here to celebrate. You're the most talented, skilled problem solvers of your generation. Through this, though this week began with some unexpected challenges, it has ended with the triumph of you conquering some of the hardest problems in ICPC North America history. If anything, the past year has shown us that the world must have great problem solvers. The problems that you are being called on to solve in the future are global in scale and importance. They impact billions of lives. You have gone way beyond the classroom to prepare yourselves as great algorithmic thinkers and have successfully developed the skills to collaboratively solve the hardest problems together with your team. Congratulations for your success in the NSA Cyber Challenge. The winner will be announced later in the program by our keynote Robert Runzner, Technical Director from NSA Hawaii. I'd like to say a few words about the amazing volunteers behind the scenes. Mounting an ICPC contest is an enormous task, even during the best of times. 
doing that during the 2020 and 2021 regional season is just next level. The constant changes as we rode this COVID wave were a challenge on a number of levels, and we know that it was a huge challenge for all of you contestants. We thank you for your patience and understanding as you rode this wave with us. To our contest directors, Tony Logar and Frederick Namilla, to our esteemed judges led by David Van Brackle, to our friends at CADIS and the PC Squared team who worked magic to make the technical systems of a remote contest run smoothly. To all those on the logistics and planning teams that moved mountains to make this event a success, we thank you and appreciate all you do to make these contests both challenging and fair. We are also very aware of how lucky we are to have the ICPC Global Sponsors. They also have made many adjustments along the way to this championship day, and we thank them for their long-term support and belief in this program. Specifically, thank you JetBrains, IBM Quantum, Deviation Games, AWS Educate, and Two Sigma. This program would not be possible without your support. Thank you. I now have the honor of introducing Dr. Michael D. Johnson, UCF's Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. As the Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Johnson leads UCF's academic programs and initiatives across 13 college, colleges, which serve nearly 72,000 students and support more than 3,000 teaching and research faculty. His responsibilities also include multiple campuses, research centers, and institutes. Dr. Johnson joined UCF in 1990 and in 2011 became Dean of the Colleges of Sciences, where he is also a professor in the Department of Physics. The college spans natural and mathematical sciences, social and behavioral sciences and communication. As Dean, Dr. Johnson oversaw the college's education, research and services activity. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, and thank you, UCF. And Dr. Johnson, let me welcome you to speak here with all of us today. Thank you, Dr. Donahue, and congratulations to the North America Championship contenders and coaches and the North America Programming Camp participants. Congratulations to everyone engaging in this, this prestigious event. And I look forward to seeing the results later in this ceremony. Good luck to all. The University of Central Florida has been proud to partner with the International Collegiate Programming Contest for decades. In that time, thousands of our students have trained and competed, often performing at the highest levels. We're very proud of this record and this partnership. And I thank ICPC for the opportunity to partner with you during this week's events. We hoped we'd be able to do this on our campus, but I'm very glad that we were able to set up this remote alternative. Students and coaches with us today, what you do matters. Your talent and training will benefit you and the nation and the world as you build your programming experience and take it to the professional workforce. The companies and institutions sponsoring this week's events may well be very important to you as potential employers. I hope you are able to join their presentation sessions and benefit from the career fair. As you know, these organizations are committed to finding the best technologists. We thank them from our hearts for their support and their determination to make sure this event would be a successful and rewarding experience for all of you. I'd particularly like to thank our titanium sponsor, the National Security Agency, and the platinum sponsor, Universal Parks and Resorts. I thought seriously about joining NSA when I was making an important decision in my career, went towards physics and academia instead. They're a remarkable group, as you know. I also extend great appreciation to our leadership partners, NFC and Dan Schiaffa. In particular, let me personally thank Bev C, who you just heard from. Her unwavering support for the North America Programming Championship and North America Programming Camp has been a driving force behind the first two NAC events, the inaugural event at Georgia Tech last year and this second event at UCF. Finally, I would be remiss not to thank the many other stakeholders and UCF partners who contributed to a successful week of events. The UCF and the ICPC organizing teams, 
and the home institutions support, who supported all of you students and the coaches. And especially, I'd like to thank the students who have worked so hard to reach this remarkable level of skill. With your knowledge and your talent, you play an enormous role in helping society advance in technological expertise and in inspiring others. Students, we believe in you. Steve Jobs said, it's not a faith in technology, it's a faith in people. And we have faith in you. Please enjoy today's event and most of all, celebrate your success. We look forward to the world finals and cheering on those of you who will compete. And all of you, great job. Thank you. Thank you, Provost Johnson, and thank you, UCF. You are truly champions of the ICPC community. I now have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker, Dr. Robert Runzer, who serves as the technical director for the NSA Agency's Research Directorate. In this role, he oversees the directorate's technical strategy, outreach activities, and research collaborations with external organizations. Dr. Runzer has conducted research in a variety of technical disciplines, such as fiber optic networking, computer networking operations, and quantum communication technologies to support NSA signals and intelligence, signals, intelligence, and cyber missions. After receiving his BS in computer engineering with distinction from the University of Kansas, he went on to receive a PhD in electrical engineering from Princeton University with a specialization in optics and optoelectronics. Dr. Runzner has published over 70 journals and conference papers, one book chapter, and is co-inventor on two US patents. We are thrilled to welcome him here this evening as our keynote speaker. Doc Dr. Runzer. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, really uh, delighted to uh, address the students today and uh, hope to discuss some of the important areas of research uh, that we conduct at the National Security Agency. I think before I do that, I also want to extend my heartfelt thanks to the ICPC Foundation, all the event sponsors, the coaches and the volunteers who have made this competition a success in light of the difficult and challenging times we all find ourselves within. I know it was only a, a month ago, we were all looking forward to being in person in Orlando. And I, I really uh, uh, thank the students for pivoting with all of us you know, in this uh, difficult time to continue to compete and show what's possible using the networking technology and the, the computer science tools that really enable virtual collaboration to be what it is today. Um, I also really wanna thank the students. The students are the reason why we have this North American championship in the first place. So without your participation, your training, your support, uh, this event would, would not take place. So really wanna thank the students for everything that they've done to get to this, this level. NSA is pleased to be a sponsor at the North American Championship because you are the nation's top undergraduate computer scientists. The skills you have practiced to get to this level also show you're, that you're the nation's top problem solvers. It is that talent that I want to address shortly that we need at NSA and across the intelligence community now more than ever in the area of computer science. NSA powers our signals intelligence and cybersecurity missions with science and technology developed by the research directorate. And I'll talk to you today about some of the exciting research areas that we're pursuing across the mission space. I will also talk to you about some ways you can get involved in our mission today to further develop your education and boost your career by getting engaged early in our mission while you're still in school. If you enjoyed the challenge problems in the competition that NSA submitted, uh, that's just a glimpse of the type of problem solving that we're looking for uh, in, the, in the folks that come join us in our mission. But first I'll share with you a little bit of my story and how I got here, uh, because it is not dissimilar to, to the pathway some of you are on. My career actually got a boost by participating in one of these competitions, uh, not the ICPC, but uh, a different student competition. So I'm gonna try to share my screen. Hopefully all of you will be able to see it because I'll have some slides that I wanna run through and let's see if this works. Let's see here. All right, start screen sharing. Don't think I may have screen sharing capability. Let's see, oh, here it is. It came up, all right. 
If I could get just a check, Jeff, that you can see the slides. Yes. So our Francesca, thumbs up, great. I can see them. The technology works, all right. So let's, let's get on with it. Um, so it may be hard to see now, but many of the decisions all the students have made to get to this competition will serve you as you successfully navigate your future career. For me, I can point to two events during my undergraduate that boosted me along my career path. The first was when I was a computer engineering student at the University of Kansas. And I was looking for something relevant to do during the summers between my sophomore and junior year. I applied to a National Science Foundation funded research experience for undergraduate graduates or REU as you may have heard it called. And I was able to join a laboratory at, the, at Colorado State University that allowed me to see what it was like firsthand to conduct research in electrical engineering. We did some amazing work that summer that resulted in a few technical publications. And this was really my first exposure to experimental research, which I found I really enjoyed. And what it's really about is the quest of new knowledge and the ability to share that knowledge with the rest of the world. About halfway through my junior year, a professor approached me and asked about my research. I was happy to talk to him for a few minutes. And then he said, to much to my surprise, how about submitting my work to the IEEE Region 5 student paper competition, which included a paper and an oral presentation? I said, sure, send me the info. I mean, it was just a few weeks out, and I'll consider it. He literally pulled the application out of his briefcase, handed it to me, and said the deadline was tomorrow. <laughs> well, as you can imagine, much to my surprise, I already had planned events. Uh, uh, for the next day, I was in the middle of studying for exams. I had the usual reaction. How in the world was I going to do my best at this opportunity if I only had eight hours to prepare this submission? Maybe some of this happened to you on the way to this championship. It was a friend who reached out to you and asked you to join their team, or the professor coach who noticed your talent and asked you to join. Or maybe you just replied to an email and took the plunge into the ICPC competition, not really knowing what to expect. And look at where you are today. Think about this series of events and the decisions you made to pursue the opportunities that presented themselves, even if you thought, well, it's unlikely your team will win, but you decided to give it a try. For me, I worked all night on that paper submission, took first place in the local chapter competition, and then won first place in the IEEE Region 5 Conference. I went on to play second in the competition the following year. The combination of the summer REU and my experience in the IEEE paper competition shaped me forever. I knew I wanted to stay in research to pursue a graduate degree, and it certainly helped me land a graduate student fellowship at Princeton to complete my doctorate. You have lots of career choices ahead of you, any of which can lead to a successful career. Continue to seize opportunities like the ICPC, and you will go far and realize your goals and dreams. But I have to tell you, it will never be easy. Remember, opportunities at, appear at the most unexpected time, and you have to be prepared to dive into the unknown to see what you are truly capable of. So now let's talk a little bit about the work we do at NSA's research directorate. NSA has two primary missions, signals intelligence, which powers our foreign intelligence mission, and cybersecurity, which enables the US to protect its most sensitive information and networks. The research directorate has five technical focus areas that are grounded in nearly a dozen technical disciplines shown in this slide. Hopefully some of you see disciplines that interest you or those that you're already involved in like computer science or artificial intelligence, data science, electrical engineering, and the others listed on this slide. I'm going to briefly describe each of our five focus areas to give you a sense of the type of work we do and perhaps inspire you along in your future career choices. So let's first start off with our cybersecurity research mission. Never before, in our nation's history, has cybersecurity research been more important than it is today? Whether you work for us or not, any code that you write for an internet application 
may become a target for hackers attempting to break into your organization or worse, your customer's network to steal sensitive data or extort money from a ransomware attack. If you remember nothing else from my talk this evening, remember that cybersecurity is all of our responsibility. We are in this together. The software we deploy must be robust and secure against the most sophisticated cyber actors who seek to steal our information and intellectual property. NSA researchers are working on large-scale graph analytics running on high-performance computing systems to try to spot the early warning signs of a large-scale cyber attack against the United States. This has become one of the hardest national security problems. The graph of the internet itself has over 50 billion vertices and 1 trillion edges. Now imagine that graph changing every second while cyber attackers hide within the ephemeral edges. Somewhere in this massive haystack is the needle that represents the pathway of a cyber intruder. And we must have the analytics and computational power to find them before it's too late. We also have developed tools that enhance the ability to build secure systems from the ground up. So they are defended from attack when they are deployed. Hopefully all of you are familiar with NSA's open source repository that can be found at code.nsa.gov. There you will find software projects like our reverse engineering tool, Ghidra, and our security extensions to Linux and Android operating systems. These packages were developed by NSA researchers over years of analysis of weaknesses in operating systems, uh, analytics that we use to spot the signatures of malware from nation states, as well as techniques to identify and patch vulnerabilities in code. I think that some of, the, some of you will use the code.nsa.gov library in your student projects, and perhaps in the software you may build in, in well into the future. If you happen to like these tools and have ideas about how to build upon them, come work with us in research to make the next submissions to open source releases even more impactful to our nation. The other side of our mission is our signals intelligence mission or SIGINT that we, as we call it for short, which powers our foreign intelligence mission at NSA. SIGINT generally has two technical disciplines, the collection and processing of electromagnetic emissions and computer network operations in pursuit of foreign intelligence to protect US interests from our adversaries. NSA is both an intelligence community and Department of Defense agency. Our troops and leaders deployed throughout the world depend on SIGINT to give them the latest threat information to ensure they are safe. One of the important areas of SIGINT research is to ensure our RF collection systems can track the most sophisticated communication signals used by foreign military and violent extremist organizations such as terrorists. Today, we depend on the combination of novel antenna design combined with software-defined radios to rapidly adapt to target environmental changes. One of the most exciting areas of research is the application of artificial intelligence and machine learning to this problem. AI will be used to enable transmitters to rapidly adapt to their environmental conditions to avoid jamming. But our receivers also have to be even smarter to keep up with these unpredictable changes when those signals are transmitted by an adversary. This is truly an exciting time for both electrical engineers and software developers. We need to find ways to automate the identification, demodulation, and extraction of intelligence content from signals even before they get to an analyst. This is a hard problem, and we need problem solvers such as you to join our mission to prepare for our future collection environment, which will certainly face daunting challenges from these new technologies. That brings us to our next technical focus area, the science of analysis. Our analysts are not just asked to translate and decode information. They must be able to convey high priority, accurate and actionable information to our elected leaders and those who may be in harm's way overseas, such as our military and diplomatic forces. Intelligence information comes in all types of formats, speech, text, images, video, 
location information, malware and network data and logs. These are just a few examples of what is needed to put together the SIGINT and cybersecurity intelligence picture. This is not a problem that we can solve manually. We're relying on automation through artificial intelligence and machine learning to support our analysts so, so they can find, recommend, and summarize the most valuable information to look at first. The systems can also spot correlations across heterogeneous data sets, which historically have been stovepiped in our analytic workflow. NSA is at the forefront of researching, developing, and applying these algorithms to our intelligence missions. We expect our researchers will be making exciting breakthroughs in the coming decade that transform and rewrite the science of analysis. But using AI and ML for such important decisions carries incredible risks. It's very different from serving up ads or a recommendation in the search engine when you have lives on the line. How reliable are those algorithms? What is the quality of the training data? We have computer scientists, mathematicians, and analysts working to understand the mathematical foundations of AI and ML to ensure its robustness and accuracy. In addition, we need to be sure that the content we are processing is real. You probably know about the growing threat of deep fakes. These are synthetically generated content using AI techniques that have lifelike appearance. We need to build analytic tools that can detect this type of data before it influences decisions or obscures the truth. If you are interested in learning more about our research into detecting deceptive content, check out our latest edition of NSA's online research magazine called The Next Wave. It's available at nsa.gov, our primary website. This magazine has an issue devoted to detecting deception in all of its different forms. And it'll give you a broader perspective, especially if you look at some of the back issues about the totality of the current areas that are important to the research directorate, as well as areas that our researchers are currently publishing in the space of science of analysis. Our next area is called the future computing. As many of you probably know, NSA has a long history of working with some of the most powerful computers to process our data. For the last few decades, this was a relatively straightforward problem given the progressive march of integrated CMOS technology, which you can see here on the graphic. Each generation of computing led to the next major leap in computational capability over time. But Moore's law is now coming to an end. What will lead the next wave of technology and architectures that will power high performance computers and supercomputers of the future? You will be the first generation that will likely invent this new form of computing. When I was in school, we were all taught about CMOS technology in the March of Moore's Law, and that is what we relied upon when we were making decisions about what areas to invest in, perhaps what computers to build compilers for, or how to architect the hardware needed for the next large-scale computer. This technology will undergo fundamental and radical changes that are difficult to predict, and you will be at the forefront of this new computing revolution. Well, NSA researchers are working on this problem too. In state-of-the-art facilities and laboratories, such as the Laboratory for Physical Sciences, located on the campus of the University of Maryland. This is truly multidisciplinary work that combines physics, computer science, engineering, mathematics, and material science to imagine systems of the future built on entirely new materials, state variables, logic devices, and architectures. There are two really important lines of research that we're pursuing right now. The first is our neuromorphic computational research program, which aims to develop and evaluate architectures that mimic the way the brain is wired to optimize and execute machine learning tasks more efficiently and at greater scale that can be done today. The other exciting computing area, as many of you have probably heard, is our decades long research program in quantum information sciences, which includes quantum computing. Shor's algorithm, could certainly threaten public key cryptography if implemented on a hypothetical quantum computer built at some point in the future. We must understand the scientific and engineering challenges with quantum computing so we can continue to produce encryption algorithms to secure our information for decades to come. 
In the 90s, when Shor's algorithm was first discovered and published, it was really just treated as a novelty. Now it's treated as an existential threat to the public key cryptography system itself. We need computer scientists, engineers, and others with a deep understanding of the security of systems along with the underlying physics to help ensure that we can invent the next wave of cryptography that will uh, secure our information for the decades to come. And this brings us to our fifth and final focus area, crypto math. And this area is our most enduring area of research since NSA's inception. Our mathematicians are the foundation of NSA's code making and code breaking capabilities. Inventing new encryption algorithms that are secure against attacks from unknown and yet to be built computers decades into the future is one of the hardest challenges at NSA. Imagine today building an encryptor and having the information that's transmitted by that encryptor be secured 70 years into the future. Imagine the capability and the computational power of our adversaries 70 years in the future if they are recording those transmissions today in the hopes of breaking them that far into the future. Well, this is the challenge our mathematicians face. They have to imagine computers that have yet to be realized and still secure information over the decades to come. And right now is a very exciting time for the math community as we enter an era dominated by the potential threat of a quantum computer. Our mathematicians are collaborating with standards bodies to evaluate proposals for new quantum resistant algorithms that also retain many of the same practical features of today's public key systems. This is a once in generation shift in cryptography that will be with us for a long time as we enter the future quantum information age. If you're a computer scientist dual majoring in mathematics, this could very well be a career path for you. Some of the mathematical disciplines that will form the foundation for this new type of cryptography are listed here. And this is only scratching the surface. This is a very deep field that's undergoing a tremendous amount of innovation and creative research across the country. And so if you're at all interested in the future of how we're going to secure our data in motion and at rest, this is probably an area you should study and get involved in, certainly right for a pursuit in graduate school um, as a thesis topic. Uh, many things have yet to be understood about how quantum computing can revolutionize uh, what we're doing, not just in security, but also for uh, computational applications in machine learning and data science. But you don't have to wait to graduate uh, school to be part of our mission. We have programs that can take advantage, uh, that you can take advantage of throughout your educational journey even today. Remember what I said about how opportunities can present themselves at the moment that you least expect them? Well, one of my favorite quotes is from the hockey great Wayne Gretzky. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. And many of you have taken the shots to get to this level of the competition. And I congratulate you for that fortitude, for the perseverance uh, that um, you certainly had to undergo in your training and your preparation to get to this level. NSA has multiple opportunities for you to come and join our team to see what it's like to be part of an elite team of researchers tackling the hardest technical problems in national security. From undergraduate summer opportunities like internships and REUs, like those that I spoke of that I took advantage of when I was much in your position, wherever it takes you, we have opportunities outside of Maryland, even at our four other cryptologic centers located in Georgia, Texas, Colorado, and Hawaii. You know, I was fortunate to have worked for four years at our center at NSA Hawaii, and I can tell you the mission, the people, and of course the island life was one of the most rewarding parts of my career at NSA. Many NSA employees have opportunities to work overseas in a variety of roles if that is what interests you. And our researchers are part of that team as well, forward deployed into different parts of the world to support our mission. The programs can be part of your career journey no matter where you are headed. And for those of you who are not sure if graduate school is for you, I encourage you to explore the research experience for undergraduates with us or one of the dozens of sponsoring universities through the NSF program to see what it's like to perform original research. We have a desperate need for researchers in computer science and mathematics 
to study at the master's and PhD level, or perhaps even to go on into academia through postdoctoral research. The, the intelligence community, including NSA, depends upon employees with master's and doctorate degrees across the technical disciplines that I just described. Consider pursuing higher educational opportunities to prepare yourself for a lifelong journey to advance science and technology for the nation. If you have graduated or are graduating soon, check out our career opportunities available at intelligencecareers.gov slash NSA, or just scan the QR code on the slide. We currently have openings in multiple disciplines, and one of the best parts of working here is that you can be part of one of our elite development programs where you tour through multiple offices over a period of a few years to learn our mission and apply your skills. We really look forward to working with you in whatever capacity you find yourself in. And remember, even if you don't join NSA, cybersecurity is likely to be in your future. So I do hope that you do become familiar with the code that NSA does release with the cybersecurity alerts that we post and of all the cybersecurity concerns that affect us as a nation. We need computer scientists who understand these threats to build security into these systems from the ground up. And I hope that this overview inspires you to think about your future and how the decisions you have made to get to this competition today may just lead you to new career, career enhancing opportunities. It has truly been a pleasure, our pleasure and a privilege to sponsor this event. If you have any questions about our mission or the research I discussed, I'll be sticking around for the question and answer period that's scheduled for later uh, uh, during the uh, closing ceremonies. But now for the real reason why many of you decided to sit through my talk is to find out who won the NSA challenge problem. If, if you enjoy working on that challenge, uh, that's just a glimpse of the types of problems our analysts and computer scientists have to solve every day. And I can tell you, this challenge was truly hard. Um, we had three teams um, that placed first, second, and third that completed seven out of the eight challenges successfully in the allotted time. And we had one uh, faculty member coach that managed to solve all eight problems, plus provided a correct answer on the bonus challenge. So I'm gonna first start by announcing the honorable mention, which goes to our faculty award winner, Andrew Key. Andrew is the MIT coach and programming camp trainer. He solved all eight problems plus the bonus problem. So congratulations to Andrew. Um, I did look, uh, look up Andrew on the, uh, on the web and apparently Andrew, you have a long list of, of uh, successes in various competitions. So you can now add the ICPC NSA challenge to that, uh, that resume. Congratulations on, uh, we'll have to write a, a stronger challenge next year to see if we can um, put something there that even the faculty can't solve. But uh, really delighted that you were able to solve uh, the challenge in the allotted time. So now um, our next uh, team will be the third place winner. Uh, this goes to the University of Texas, Austin. Uh, again, all the third place, all the, the winners I'm about to announce solve seven out of the eight challenges. And the only thing that really separated these teams was the amount of time. So UT Austin, congratulations on your third place uh, 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 winning team. Um, you will be receiving some NSA prizes, so congratulations. Our second place winner goes to the University of California, Berkeley. Go Berkeley, again, you'll be receiving prizes from NSA for being the second place winner. And now the grand finale, the first place winner, which will also receive a cash reward, goes to Swarthmore College. Congratulations to the Swarthmore team for completing the seven out of eight challenges with the, the, the top time amongst the, the student team. It really truly is inspiring to have uh, sponsored this competition. We truly want to thank all the students who competed in our challenge, as well as those who participated in the other challenges uh, throughout the competition. And again, if you are not a winner um, in, in this challenge, and you know, Remember the preparation and the work you put into getting here. Those decisions will take you even further. I often tell my fellow researchers, we mostly learn through failure. And that's what the scientific process and innovation process is all about. You try to, uh, try to uh, 
put together a solution to a hypothesis, sometimes you're not correct and you learn more from those failures than from your successes so you can try again. So even for those who did not win um, you know, the awards for these challenges this year, uh, please um, you know, uh, recognize the hard work that you put into getting to this level. You are part of the elite teams that compete on the national stage. And uh, truly, you are all winners in the eyes of, of NSA for getting to this part of the competition. So we truly look forward to um, in interfacing with you and working with you throughout the, your career journeys. And so that concludes um, the NSA portion of, of the keynote. And I guess, uh, Jeff, I'm going to turn it back over to you for the remainder of the agenda. All right. Thanks, Robert. And congratulations again to all the NSA Challenge winners. That was amazing. And, and thanks to NSA for reminding us that security is really all of our responsibilities. We, we understand that um, we are going to be, as the great problem solvers from the ICPC, we are going to be solving the really hard problems in the future. Uh, but we want to make sure that, 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 that key, a key core part of all of those solutions is to make sure uh, that it's secure. And I want to encourage all the students uh, to, you know, those last slides about the opportunities at NSA, I really hope that you will all uh, take advantage of those opportunities. I've talked to lots of folks from NSA and in, in putting together uh, uh, this NAPC and NAC, and I know that they are really interested in engaging you however uh, you want to be engaged, whether it's, you know, jobs fresh out of your undergraduate degree or, or go on to graduate school. And so those are just really incredible opportunities. Uh, for you. So thanks to NSA uh, for all that you've done for sponsoring and thanks for the opportunities that you're giving these students beyond the contest. All right, so now we are going to move on to our ICPC North America Awards. And I just want to say thank you to all of the folks that we're about to give these awards to. I mean, this really none of this is possible uh, without the contributions of an amazing team. Um, and this year, we want to recognize some of the folks that have made this uh, 2021 NAPC and NAC a, possi a possibility. So let's, let's go with our first award. The, out, the ICPC North America Outstanding Contribution Award for their endless dedication to making the dream of the NAPC uh, a reality for serving as leaders and organizing the NAC, the University of Central Florida, for uniting communities, industry, and academia. Thank you for all you've done to assure the success. So thanks to all these folks that are here on the slide that have really made this possible for UCF. And again, congratulations to UCF. You guys really are champions of ICPC North America. Then our next outstanding contribution award, our outstanding partner award for serving as the ICPC North America Championship Sponsor for providing outstanding support for the ICPC North America community, for sponsoring the inaugural edition of the 2020 NAC, and their dedication to the students across North America. I would like to thank the NSA, our Titanium ICPC North America Championship host. And again, the NSA has really done uh, amazing work in supporting the startup of the NAC last year and continuing this year, and of course, uh, their support of the, the NAPC. And our next award, the ICPC North America Outstanding Partner Award for serving as the North, ICPC North America Programming Camp Sponsor, for providing outstanding support for the ICPC North America community, for sponsoring the inaugural edition of the 2020 NAC, and their dedication to the students across North America, drum roll, Universal Parks and Resorts, Platinum ICPC North America sponsor for the programming camp. So thank you to Universal Parks and Resorts. And I hope we all have a chance to go out and enjoy the rides. And for a lot of you, you know, you saw some of the opportunities to get some great jobs there. Uh, so, so thanks to Universal. Our next award, the ICPC North America Outstanding Partner Award for serving as ICPC North America Championship and Programming Camp sponsors for providing out standing support for ICPC North America community for sponsoring inaugural edition of the 2021 NAC and their dedication to the students across North America. Thanks to Orange County, the Florida High Tech Corridor, L3 Harris, Northrop Grumman, 
and the Royal Bank of Canada. Thanks to all of you for making all of this possible. Um, we really do appreciate it. Uh, without your support, again, none of this would be possible. Now I would like to take the opportunity to thank some of our, our global sponsors. So first I would like to thank JetBrains, ICPC Global Programming Tools sponsor. JetBrains is a global company that makes professional software development tools for Java, Kotlin, C Sharp, C++, Ruby, Python, PHP, JavaScript, and many other languages, as well as project management and team collaboration tools. Founded in 2000, JetBrains has created dozen of, dozens of effective solutions to free, uh, to, to made them free for people from, to free people from mundane routine, routine tasks and help them focus on the big picture. More than 10 million, which aims to solve complex problems, which aims to solve complex problems the world's most powerful supercomputers just cannot solve and never will. IBM Quantum hires researchers, scientists, developers, engineers, and others around the globe who advance the field of quantum computing. Special thanks to AWS Educate, our ICPC Edutech sponsor. AWS Educate is an Edutech sponsor of the ICPC community. AWS Educate is Amazon's global initiative to provide students comprehensive resources for building skills in the cloud. It is a no cost curriculum providing access to content training pathways, AWS services, and the AWS Educate job board with employment opportunities. Thanks to AWS Educate. To Deviation Games, founded in the fall of 2019, Deviation Games is a new gaming company whose mission is to make the most engaging, innovative games on the planet. Formed by industry leaders with a mission of developing the types of games they want to play, Deviation draws from the most experienced talent in the industry to build teams of creative innovators. This is a company where the best of the best learn from each other, working on the leading edge of what is possible in video game creation. Thanks, Deviation Games. And to Two Sigma. Two Sigma is a financial services company. They combine rigorous inquiry, data analysis, and invention to solve the toughest challenges across financial services. Two Sigma is looking for people who see beauty in data and the possibilities it reveals. Researchers who see connections and patterns in unexpected places. Engineers who build tools that channel massive amounts of data into insights. And experts across business disciplines to help solve the toughest challenges in investment management, insurance, market making, private equity, and venture capital. So thanks to Two Sigma for all of your contributions. And Next, I would like to introduce our director of judging. So for all of you students that want to do on mute, a collective boo for the hard problems. Uh, but uh, for me, I will celebrate all of the judges that made this possible. So I'd like to introduce you to David Van Brackle, director of judging. Hello, everyone. Um, I want to give a special thanks to the judges who helped put together this problem set. Putting together a problem set is a time-consuming process. It took us about eight weeks to put together this problem set. And that's after, uh, after our call for problems called, after we had all the problems in our pool, it takes eight weeks to select the problems and go through quality control. And we work with some amazing people. So I want to say a special thanks to all of the judges who contributed, Matt Fontaine, Mark Furon, Rachel Crone, Finn Lidbetter, Antonio Molina, Andy Nguyen, Arnav Sanstri, Nick Wu, and Bowen Wu. And I want to say a special thanks to three people. Uh, first, Tom Rokicki. Tom has, is such a great leader. He's practically another chief judge. Lewin Gan, who I think he may be the only one of us who knows how to solve every single problem in the set. Lewin is a genius. It is such a privilege to work with him. And Greg Hammerly, who works with CADIS and works with us to help make sure that the problems work correctly in CADIS, which isn't always straightforward. So thanks to all of our judges. And I will say to all of you, uh, you don't have to be you know, the top of the top. You don't have to be another Lou Gan to be a judge. You will learn a tremendous amount. I have learned so much from working with these people as judges. So, <laughs> so someone is impressed with my cat. Uh, so if, 
if you are, want to continue, and I urge you to continue being involved in the ICPC, and if you're not going to be a coach when your programming uh, contest competing, competing days are over, I urge you to be a judge. And go through the ICPC. They'll get you how to get, how to tell you how to get in touch with me, and I can get you in touch with the region that, uh, uh, that, with a region that could use you to help judging. So with that being said, let's take a look at the results. We'll get, take a moment to allow the, uh, the resolver to come up. It sometimes takes a minute. So this is the resolver. I think most of you uh, probably have seen the resolver. This is the scoreboard as it stood when it was closed or frozen an hour before the contest ended. Green means the problem was solved. Red means it wasn't. Yellow means it was submitted in that last hour. So now we're going to go through that last hour and see what happened. So let's start off with Clemson. They only have one problem, but they got problem D. So they now have two. Now let's take a look. Wow, look at that. They just got problem J. That puts them at three. And problem four, they got four problems. They moved up. DePaul University has three problems. They're going to stay where they are. Clemson has no more out. Johns Hopkins does not get problem C. They're going to stay in 46th place. Case Western, oh, they got problem C and up they go. Wow, they go far up. Milwaukee School of Engineering, they got problem C and up they go. Bob Jones is going to stay where they are. University of Toronto has two problems out there. Let's see how they did on C. They did not get C. How about L? No, they did not. They are gonna stay where they are. Duke, they have a submission on A. They did not come in. Uh, problem C, problem C did, up they go. Uh, Caltech, let's see how they did on problem C. No, that's a problem, uh, that problem did come in, up they go, they have five now, we're up to the fives. The University of British Columbia, let's see how they did on problem C. C and L seem to be very popular and they moved up. Ohio State, problem C, no, problem L, no, they're gonna stay where they are, Harvard. They've got one out there on problem L, but it did not come in. Harvard's gonna stay at 42. Rice, they have a submission on L and it came in. So they go up with the other fives. Uh, Illinois Urbana-Champaign, they've got a C, but they did not get it. They're gonna stay at 41. Simon Fraser, they've got an L out there and it did not come in. They'll stay where they are. Cal Berkeley, they've got a C and it came in, up they go. We're gonna talk more about them later. You saw that dark green, uh, square, that means something. We'll talk about them in just a minute. Stanford, they've got a C out there. It did not come in and an L, it did not come in. They'll stay where they are. Caltech has no more uh, outstanding. They'll stay there. Uh, Milwaukee School of Engineering, they did not get problem L. They'll stay with the fives. Columbia, they've got an A and they did not get it. They've got an L, did not get that. They'll stay with the fives. Case Western, they've got an L and it came in. They're up to the sixes. Congratulations, Rice does not have any more outstanding. Texas at Austin, there's a C and they got it, up they go. University of Washington with a C, no, they did not get it. Duke University with an L, they did not get it, they'll stay where they are. British Columbia with an L, they did not get it. University of Cincinnati with an L, oh, they got it. They got that problem L, they're gonna go up to the sixes. Emory University with an L, oh, they got it too, up to the sixes. University of Virginia with an A, it did not come in. An L, it did not come in. Princeton University, they've got a C out there and it came in, up they go to the sixes. UCF, only five problems for UCF. Did they get A? They did not, get they, did they get C? They did, up they go to the sixes. Cal Berkeley, now they have a K, it did not come in. How about L? It did come in, so up they go, they're up to the sixes. Northeastern University, they've got an L out there and it came in, up they go to the sixes. Alberta, they've got an A, it did not come in. C, it did come in, they're up to the sixes. A lot of teams with six so far. University of North Texas, they have none outstanding, they'll stay in that place. York University, they've got a C, it did not come in, they'll stay with the fives. University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, they've got an L, it came in, up they go to the sixes. University of Rochester, they've got an L. 
it came in. They go up to the sixes. Texas A&M, they've got a lot out. They've got a B. That's how they did on problem B. They did not get it. Problem G, no, they didn't get problem G. Those are hard problems. Problem L, they got that one, though. Up they go to the sixes. NC Chapel Hill did not get A, did not get C. They're going to stay where they are. Wisconsin Madison did not get A. They did get L. Up they go to the sixes. McGill University, did they get A? They did not. A must have been a very difficult problem. C, they got C, though, and up they go to the sixes. Uh, Texas at Dallas, they've got L out there. Did they get it? They did. They're up to the sixes. So now we're into the, pro the six problem teams. Case Western University, they're going to stay where they are. University of Texas at Austin, did they get E? They did not. They will stay there. So University of Cincinnati will stay there. Princeton will stay where they are. Cal Berkeley is going to stay where they are. But Cal Berkeley is the search to solve problem M in seven minutes. So congratulations to the folks at Cal Berkeley. And there they are. Congratulations, Cal Berkeley. And now we move on. Let's see if I can get my mouse to where I want it to be. There we go. So Emory is going to stay at six. Rutgers is going to stay at six. Northeastern, stay at six. University, University of Central Florida, UCF, they're going to stay at six. Michigan at six. UCLA at six. Alberta at six. Texas A&M at six. Uh, Wisconsin-Madison at six. Rochester at six. Purdue University is at six, but we're going to stop and say hi to these guys because not only were they first to solve problem F, but they were the first to solve solve any problem in the contest. They solved problem F in two minutes, and that was the first problem solved in the entire contest. So congratulations to those guys, the guys from Purdue. Congratulations. Orlando Madrigal, would you like to say a few words? I wonder if he's trying to unmute. Orlando Madrigal is the executive director of the UPE Honor Society, who has been a sponsor of the ICPC since its inception in 1970. Orlando, you're on mute. You're muted. Okay, let me start all over again. <laughs> On behalf of Upsilon, Pi Epsilon, or UPE, congratulations to the programming teams and their coaches who qualified for and have participated in this year's North American Championship. UPE was founded at Texas A&M University in 1967. Our primary mission is to recognize academic excellence in the computing and information disciplines. We have chapters in over 300 colleges and universities in North America and overseas. UPE is recognized as the pro, uh, organization that started the first programming contest. Now, that was held in College Station in 1970. Since that time, this competition has become a major event for computing science students. And with the efforts of Bill Poucher and his colleagues at Baylor, they have expanded this event into what we now know as the ICPC, a worldwide programming competition. Today, I'm especially honored on behalf of BPE to uh, recognize and announce Purdue University as the team that solved the first problem at this contest. Two minutes, that's amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how long the problem was. I assume you're able, you're able to read the whole thing in two minutes or less. Anyway, thank you very much on behalf of BPE. Congratulations to Purdue. David, it's your turn. <laughs> David, you're muted. You're muted, I think. Oh. There we go. I think it muted me when uh, Orlando took over. Okay. So we move on. 
11, Carnegie Mellon, they have six. They have a submission on A. It does not come in. McGill University with six. They're going to stay there. Yale University with six. They're going to stay there. University of Texas at Dallas with six. They're going to stay here, there. University of Toronto has a submission on H. Did they get it? They did not. But they've got one of those dark green squares, which means they were the first to solve problem C. So congratulations. First being the first to solve problem C. And onward we move. Georgia Tech, they've got six, but they've got one out there. Did they get in problem L? They did. They're up to seven. They're in third place. That's the medals. They're up in the medals now. So now we are in the medals, as a matter of fact. We are in the medals. University of California, San Diego. They've got a submission on A. Did they get it? They did not. They've got a submission on E. Did they get it? They did not. But University of California, San Diego, congratulations. You are bronze medalists. Eh, that's the one I want. Yeah. Congratulations, bronze medalists. This is San Diego and he placed bronze. University of British Columbia, they've got a G out there. Did they get it? They did not. They have six problems, but they are also Bronze medalists, congratulations on a bronze medal. Next, Swarthmore College. They've got a submission on A. Did they get it? They did not. That must have been one heck of a hard problem. But they're in fourth place, which means They've got a bronze medal, but that's not all. They are also the first to solve problem J and the first to solve problem L. Congratulations to Swarthmore. Oops, let me. Uh... There they are. Congratulations, Swarthmore. And we move on to the silver medals, Georgia Tech. They don't have any submissions, but they are silver medalists. So congratulations, Georgia Tech. And next we have MIT. Now MIT has a lot of submissions out there. So this thing is not settled yet. I know you see 10 and seven there, but that could be 11 if they got to get all four of those. So let's see what happens. They have a submission on problem A, they didn't get it. How about problem E? They did get problem E. How about problem H? No, and problem K? They got problem K and they were the first to get problem K. 203 minutes into the contest. That must've been a very hard problem. So congratulations to MIT silver medalists and first to solve problems D and K. Congratulations, MIT. Well, we're down to cases now. We know who won, but the question is, did they all kill this contest? University of Waterloo, they're gonna be our champions. They're gonna have several first to solve, but did they all kill this contest? Let's see, they've got a submission on problem B, no one else got it, but they did. Of course, they're the first to get it because they're the only ones to get it. Problem H, did they get problem H? Uh, they didn't, so it's not going to be an all kill, but it is going to be a first place finish. 
Did they get problem K? They did get problem K just two minutes after MIT. So congratulations to the University of Waterloo, our overall winner, our gold medalists, and the first to solve problems A, B, E, G, and I. Congratulations, Waterloo. And thank you all for putting up with me through this resolution. I'm going to turn things back over to Jeff now. All right. Thanks, Man B. I really do appreciate it. That was an exciting finish. And congratulations to Waterloo. That's an amazing, uh, amazing performance. Of course, I would like to congratulate all the teams that advanced to the NAC. We know it was a long and winding road, both virtually and literally, for all of us to get here. I would like to also extend my personal thanks to all of the coaches that continue to train and inspire your teams. Your knowledge and experience, your wisdom, these are all things that are key to the success of future generations. You know, performing during intense times is an amazing achievement. And my respect and admiration goes out to all of you for being the best of the best in North America. And congratulations to all of those teams for all that you've done. And before I turn it over to, to Bev, I would like to talk about, um, you know, what it really takes to make the ICPC uh, an amazing organization here in North America. And it really does take outstanding leadership. So I would like to extend the ICPC North America Outstanding Leadership Award for ICPC leadership in organizing the North America programming camps and championships, encouraging the art and science of competitive programming to flourish among universities in the United States and Canada, engaging community leadership in support of ICPC programs, displaying extraordinary determination to provide opportunities for students of, com of competitive programming. In service and spirit, this person embodies the ideals of the ICPC. Congratulations to the Honorable Bev. Bev, I'm gonna turn it over to you to close us out. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's always a pleasure to work with the ICPC. It's very exciting and very rewarding experience. Congratulations again to all who competed in today's championship and to our winning teams. Before we officially wrap, I want to ask all students to join Robert in a breakout room, which Francesca will open momentarily for a brief conversation about your experience as an ICPC competitor. I want to thank all of our speakers today, most especially Dr. Michael Johnson and Dr. Robert Ronser, for taking the time to address our competitors, coaches, and event contributors. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Once again, congratulations to our top North America team, who I know will represent us all well on the world final stage. And once again, I look forward to seeing you all at the North America Championship next year.